I'm often asked for some suggestions for my favorite books on different figures in church history. And I wanted to start this one by noting some of the best books on Luther. Now, if you want to check out any of these books, you can look down in the description below for links to these on Amazon. But here are the four best books on Martin Luther. We begin with Roland Bainton's Here I Stand. Now, I need to take you back to a time in the early 1900s when the Reformers were not as appreciated as they are today. You see, if you were to live around the time of World War II, Luther really wasn't a hero for all Protestants as he is for so many today. You see, there's a little bit of a challenge here. Luther very often excoriated others who were not with him on all kinds of issues. For example, on the Lord's Supper, he would be a little bit blistering, if not downright nasty at times, to his Protestant brothers in different traditions. Well, over the course of centuries, that reality meant that the biggest fans of Luther around the time of the Second World War were actually Lutheran. However, Roland Bainton's book changed so much of this. It came out, this book, Here I Stand, and it really is a classic. It describes Luther in very, very wonderful, readable. In fact, it's probably the most readable biography of Luther out there even today. And it put Luther back on the map. He suddenly became a person of respect for all Protestant traditions and even for some Catholics, frankly. Now, there's a problem with this biography that we're going to go ahead and say, which is it's a bit too whitewashed. Bainton passes over things like Luther's anti-Semitism or his attacks on others. Bainton himself really liked, in the context of the Second World War, those who were conscientious objectors to things. Bainton liked pacifists. He also studied Anabaptist and more radical Reformation history. So even the title of the book, Here I Stand, kind of signals where Bainton's going with this. Luther in this book is going to come across as the barbaric yelp of the Reformation, the man that stands there defiantly with a fist in the air against the establishment. Is it any wonder that this is in the run-up to the 1960s? But again, there are some things that are whitewashed over this story. The book can be forgiven for this, one, because it's so readable, but secondly, because it put Luther back on the map for so many people. So it is certainly always going to be a standard classic, at least for the foreseeable future. Another one is James Kittleson, Luther the Reformer, the story of the man and his career. Very often, if I'm asked to give a book that's a standard intro-level biography, this is the one I suggest. It assumes nothing from its readers other than the idea that you want to read something about Luther. It explains jargon to the best of its ability, and it's not really spending a lot of time in deep theological reflection, as you might get in some really more academic biographies. In some ways, Kittleson's book is an updated, though of course different version of Roland Bainton's book, with more research, more of the more modern things that we know about Luther all woven into the story, and certainly more of a desire to have a picture of Luther, warts, and all. The third book is by Heiko Obermann, and it's Luther, Man Between God and Devil. Now, this book, I think, is probably the more challenging one to read by a rookie, by those who are not trained in history. Not because it's a hard book to read. It's a very, very good biography, and people love it. But you have to understand what Obermann is doing in this book. In many ways, Obermann is assuming that the reader knows some things, some basic information about Luther, and he's going through and correcting a lot of it. See, Obermann is very allergic to the idea that Luther is a 21st or 20th century man. Even the subtitle, Luther, Man Between God and Devil, has in it this idea that he is very much a medieval man. He comes from the 15th and 16th century. This is not a man of modern day. And Obermann is a little tired of the whitewashed, updated, cleansed, um, overly heroic Luther that is often depicted in biographies. So I would not say read Obermann first, but certainly read him at some point. Obermann is so important as a historian that he's just Obermann. He's just that important. And this is one of those biographies. Now, it is written all over the place. It goes in different directions. The biography actually notoriously starts with his death and then kind of works back. It's really a bit like Citizen Kane in the sense it is told out of sequence back and forth. But if you have some basics of Luther's life, you're going to see and know exactly where he's going with all this stuff. Fourth and lastly, Scott Hendricks' new biography. In fact, I think it only came out last year, 2015, sometime in the fall or winter. Then it is a great book. Scott spent so many years as a professor of theology and church history at Princeton Seminary that the book is a culmination of all of his efforts and his work. 
Also, it is the most updated biography to date. It takes into itself, you might say, all of the things from previous biographies and previous research, as well as other things that you and I might not be aware of that occurred in journals and articles, little small tweaks here and there in the history to make it more accurate. One of my favorites is the beginning where it talks about how Luther's birth date is something we actually don't know. <laughs> Luther himself doesn't actually seem to be aware of the exact dating of his birth. And so there's little wrinkles like this that make it a more full portrait. And so if you're really digging into Luther and you want to read one more, this is certainly one to have on the list. Okay, those are my top four for Luther. You can find the links in the descriptions below. But with Luther, of course, these are only my top four. There are, of course, scads of books that we could mention, but these are the ones that I would pick as my top four.